Hey there! Today we are cooking with garlic, dill, vinegar, water, sugar, salt, spices, and whatever vegetables you like. On this episode of What Do You Make of This? We're making pickles. Okay, so before we even get started, I just want to make a quick note to talk about the difference between canning and pickling. When you can something, you use very specialized jars that basically have lids that vacuum seal. You also essentially cook the life out of whatever is inside of your jars. That kills off any microbes, and that's what creates something that is shelf stable. What we're doing today is actually pickling. So what we're going to be doing is making what's called a refrigerator pickle. And what it is, is it's a mixture of sugar, salt, and vinegar that basically slows the growth of any kind of microbes, which makes these safe to keep in your refrigerator for a few months. Do not keep them on a shelf. They will go bad very quickly and you will rue the day. I just wanna make that very clear for safety's sake. Refrigerator pickles though, I think are the way to go because we're not going to be cooking everything under super high heat, it actually retains the crispness of the vegetables and everything has a much lighter, brighter, crisper flavor that you just can't get when you can. So here we go, refrigerator pickles, let's do it. So what I've got here, and again, this is the beauty of it, because we're pickling and not canning, you can really use any container that you like. I have got a little decorative jar. I've even got just a leftover um, pasta sauce jar that I washed, cleaned out, it's good to go. We're going to be turning that now into a pickle jar. So it's a great way to reuse some of your um, leftover jars. I basically hoard these things and I use them to make pickles all summer long. So enough on jars, enough on that. Let's get it out of the way. It's time to do a little bit of prep work. So the first thing I want to do is just break down a couple of cloves of garlic. We're going to be using this as part of the flavor base in the pickle brine. So I'm going to use really, Add garlic with your heart. If you like a lot of garlic, go nuts. If you like just a little bit of garlic flavor, that's fine too. I'm just gonna get that clove out of the way. I'm going to use four cloves of garlic and just enough to give a little bit of flavor. So we'll put two cloves into each jar is what I'll be going for here. So all I'm going to do is just start peeling these. And normally when I peel garlic, I like to give it a good smash. In this case, I think I'm gonna either leave it whole or just cut it in half because I don't really want it to fall apart. This way it's gonna retain a lot of its shape and a lot of its um, texture, which allows you to, if you want to, you can eat the garlic as part of the pickles and now you've just got pickled garlic. That's fantastic. So all I'm gonna do is just kind of run the tip of my knife along the skin of garlic that's not peeling easily. Maybe even just snip off this end. That'll give me, really I'm just looking for something to grab onto so I can start peeling it because it's a little tricky to peel garlic if you don't smash it first. But I do wanna show you how it's done because it can be, like I said, a little tricky. So those two are good. I'm just going to put them in a little bowl off to the side. Same thing here. So let's just snip off the end and hopefully, yes, that will give you, there's usually a little piece of skin that will start to break away when you snip off the end and that gives you something you can grab onto so you can just start peeling. Try to get all of the skin off because that will not be very good in your pickles. And if you see, as I'm peeling this garlic, there's kind of a hidden spot here that looks a little off cut that off. This is very important when you're doing any kind of pickling or preserving because you want to make sure there's just nothing questionable going into that jar. The fresher and brighter things are, the longer they will stay fresh in your refrigerator. Okay, final time, snipping off that end, getting it out of the way, and just looking for that spot where you can grab the skins and peel them off. There we go. Okay, so that is garlic done. Try to get that out of the way. There we go. Okay, um, next thing I want to do is just finish up the cucumbers. So what I'm gonna be pickling are cucumbers to make very traditional pickles. I'm also going to pickle green beans because personally I love them and you don't have to do very much to prep them. So hooray, very quick pickles. So all I'm doing for these, I have found these cute little mini cucumbers. I'm just going to cut it into quarters because they're a little too big to easily fit into the jars. And because they're so big, they won't absorb very much of this vinegar and brine, so they won't get a lot of flavor. But if you cut them into spears, and to do that, I'm just going to cut it in half, and then we'll cut that half in half again. Lay it flat side down, that will make your life a lot easier while you're cutting. And then by cutting your halves into quarters, you get nice little spears. Ah, just like you can buy at the grocery store, except these are going to taste way better. Okay, and like I had mentioned, green beans, 
they're good as is. They're already trimmed. I bought the ones that are already washed and trimmed and in a bag because it just makes life so much easier. So I'm not really going to worry about those. The next thing we're going to do is just start packing jars. So like I had mentioned, I'm just using any kind of jars that I like. I've even done this before um, using Tupperwares that have been cleaned. When I do that though, I like to just do it if in a very small batch that I know I'm going to eat quickly because sometimes plastic can harbor some microbes that glass does not. So word to the wise, I prefer glass. If plastic's all you have, that's okay. You can use it, but eat them quickly. Okay, so into these jars, I'm going to go in with some fresh dill. And there's really, as with the garlic, no real rules here. If you like a lot of dill, stuff the jars. If you don't like a lot of dill, go easy on it. I'm gonna put the stems in too because there's a lot of flavor there. And we're not really going to be eating the dill, it's just going to be flavoring the pickles. This is how you make dill pickles. So grab a few more sprigs. I'm just trying to find some nice ones here because this one is like all stem but hardly any leaf, so. I also wanna make sure I leave room for all of those vegetables. Okay, that looks good. And then I was smart before I started cooking and kind of did a little test run to measure with my jars and I have discovered that the very long uh, cucumber spears fit nicely into my very long jar. So I'm just going to start dropping those in wherever and however they fit. And I'm gonna try to do it around the dill just so that as everything sits and hangs out and you'll see what I mean later, um, the dill flavor really has a chance to kind of permeate everything and isn't just kind of hanging out off to one side. And that will just make for a nice, evenly flavored pickle. And I think I should be able to get all of these cucumber spears in as long as I really commit to the process. And don't panic too much if you start packing the dill down, it's okay. You'll still get a few of those fronds moving their way in and out of whatever it is that you're pickling, and that's totally fine. So speaking of that, like I said, I was using cucumbers and um, green beans today, but you can pickle pretty much any crunchy vegetable that you like. I have pickled carrots, I have pickled bell peppers, I've pickled onions, shallots, so really sky's the limit. Um, I have never done it myself, but I've seen pickled radishes and it's a great idea because I love radishes. Delicious in tacos, by the way. So have some fun with this. Once you've kind of experimented and gotten the hang of it, feel free to go nuts and whatever you think could make a good pickle, give it a try. I mean, worst case scenario, what, you're out a couple bucks of vegetables and then you know if it's gonna work or not. Okay, I think I can get, yes, that very last spear is going in. Perfect. Okay, and then the next one we're going to do are the green beans. So, same thing. I think I'm going to be able to get all of these in. Again, I did a little test run just to make sure everything fit before we got started here. I recommend you do the same. There's nothing like being halfway through pickling and finding out that your vegetables are too big and you have to trim them down. So, do a little test run, but I also did not take into account the dill, so. We'll find out together if everything's going to fit. <laughs> so like I did with the cucumbers, I'm just trying to kind of get these first few all around the dill just so that it kind of fans out inside that jar. And then once I've got that going, I'm just gonna start packing in the rest. Really with no form or function, I'm just trying to make them go in as straight as possible, really so I can fit in as many vegetables as possible. I love pickled green beans. They are delicious in salads. They're delicious as um, little garnishes if you make a lot of cocktails. I know uh, here in Canada, they're very, very popular in a drink called a Caesar, which is kind of like a Bloody Mary. It's a very spicy tomato and I think vodka drink, but almost always I see pickled green beans in them. And that's actually where I fell in love with pickled green beans and just started making my own. I eat them straight out of the jar. They are so delicious. And I find that unlike uh, cucumbers, they retain a lot of really nice crunch and kind of become little flavor sponges in their own way. So you can start adding in really spicy things like jalapenos, crushed red pepper flakes, and the green beans will just really pick up that flavor. It's fantastic. Okay, so as I had warned, I did not take into account the dill and how much space it would take up. So that jar is looking pretty well packed. I don't wanna, eh, we got a little more room there. <laughs> I don't wanna stuff it completely because I do wanna make sure that the brine can really get in when we make it and get all around the vegetables because that's going to be what helps to pickle them. And if the pickling liquid can't get in there, you can't make pickles. But that looks pretty good. I'll turn it a few ways so you can see. Same thing with this one. So everything is very, Pretty uniform here. You can see some little bits of dill going through it and that is going to be what allows the pickles to get a lot of really nice flavor. Um, 
and it's also going to be keeping their color. So these are beautiful to give as gifts, again, as long as you keep them refrigerated. So speaking of that brine, let me show you how to make that part next. Okay, so it's time to get going on this pickle brine. So this is going to be one of the few times you see me meticulously measuring, but I am going to get my measuring cup ready to go here. And I'm going to start by just measuring out four cups of water. There we go. It's very full. So this four cups of water, make sure I get it up to the right level here. There we go. Is going into a pot and I've already got the pot on just to get things boiling a little more quickly. So we're not sitting around watching a pot boil. Okay, so that is four cups of water. The next thing I'm going to be going in with is two and a half cups of white vinegar. You have a couple of options for vinegar. You can use white vinegar, you can use apple cider vinegar. That's about it. The reason it's so limited, even though there's a million vinegars out there, is they all have different levels of acidity. What we're doing here is basically chemistry. So you want to make sure that the vinegar you're using is very acidic because as you make pickles, like I had mentioned before, the canning process relies on really high heat to kill any microbes. When you're making pickles, it's going to be using acid, salt, and sugar. And those three things combined are going to be what kill any microbes in your pickles, keeping them fresher for longer. So you wanna be using a very high acid vinegar. Like I said, you can use apple cider vinegar. I'm personally not a fan of it in pickles. I like white vinegar better because it has a very blank, um, almost non-existent flavor. It's just very, very tangy, which in my opinion is a good thing for pickles. It allows the different spices and the vegetables to really be the star of the show. But hey, if you like apple cider vinegar, by all means, be my guest. So like I had said, two and a half cups of white vinegar. Make sure I measure that just right. So again, like I had said, basic chemistry is going on here. So you want to make sure you've got the correct proportions of everything because if either the acid, the salt, or the sugar are off slightly, it's going to reduce the shelf life of your pickles. Um, so you really wanna make sure you pay close attention to that. Next thing I'm going in with is going to be coarse salt. So let's talk about this salt a little bit. Pickling salt, coarse salt, is very different from your standard table salt. As you can see here, they're more like very small rocks where table salt is like very fine sand. Make sure you're using an actual coarse pickling salt for this because we're going to be measuring by volume um, and not by weight. If you were to use the same measurement of regular table salt, you're going to get very, very salty pickles. That would be a bad thing because essentially you're adding more salt that way. So this is going to be six tablespoons of coarse salt going into this pot just like so. I'm gonna just give that a quick little stir just to help evenly distribute it because what we're doing is we're going to be bringing this to a boil and we're waiting for everything to dissolve. Okay, next thing we're going to go in with are these four cloves of garlic that we had already peeled earlier. So the garlic is going in now for two different reasons. First, I like to cook it now because it infuses a lot of really great garlic flavor into this brine, um, which again, more flavor, good thing. So garlic is going in. The other reason I like to cook the garlic instead of just putting it straight in the jar is that garlic, if you are putting it, if you're trying to preserve it, like let's say you're putting it in an oil or you're putting it in a vinegar, raw garlic can contain botulism because it's grown underground. So if you put raw garlic into something like that and then leave it sitting for a while, there's a chance that it can actually sprout botulism, which would be a very, very bad experience. If however, you drop it into a hot liquid, bring it to a boil, that's going to kill any kind of um, pathogens at all really, for whether it's botulism or any other kind of bacteria or microbe, making it a lot safer um, to store in your refrigerator for a long period of time. So my advice to you, into the pot, boil your garlic. It'll make it taste better, it'll be a lot safer. Next thing going in is white sugar. So this is a quarter cup of plain white sugar. Here too, do not substitute this. Don't go trying to use honey or brown sugar. White sugar is used very specifically in pickling because again, it helps to kill any kind of microbes. If you start using other sugars, it just won't have the quite um, the same potency really of sugar, which is weird that sugar can actually be used in preserving. But when you think about jams or even sweet pickles, sugar is the thing that keeps it from going bad. So like I said, quarter of a cup of sugar going into this pot. And the last thing, actually, let me just give this another stir because I see some bubbles starting to form on the bottom of that pot. The last thing going in is pickling spice. So you can certainly make your own pickling spice. I like to buy mine because frankly, it's a lot easier than trying to make my own blend. 
Every brand is a little different, but the three basic spices that you see in pickling spice are um, mustard seed, coriander, and bay leaves. From there, different brands have different things. I've seen some that have um, cinnamon, cardamom, uh, red pepper flakes, so really the, the other spices can change. You're welcome to try different brands until you find one that you like. Honestly, I like to buy pickling spice whenever I see it on sale. I don't really care what brand it is. It's kind of an adventure every time and I haven't been disappointed yet. So with this pickling spice, I'm going to carefully measure out two tablespoons. And that is also going into the pot. Just like so. It's a really interesting blend of like sweet spices and savory spices because of the cinnamon, but also the pepper and the mustard. Um, and it's just what lends some really great flavor to homemade pickles that you don't usually see from store bought. So it's one of the things that I think really makes a home pickle taste special and different and is the reason I like to make them so much. Okay, so I'm going to give this a good stir. What's going to happen now is I'm going to bring this to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're going to be pouring it pretty much straight away on top of our vegetables to get them ever so slightly cooked and to begin the pickling process. So bringing this to a boil, I'm going to get everything ready so we can pour it on top of our vegetables. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so this brine has come to a boil. It is good and hot. And let me tell you, this stuff is potent between the vinegar and the spices. Let's just say if you have a cold or any kind of congestion and you lean over that pot, that's gonna just clear you right up. So be very careful. Do not take a deep whiff of this because it's really strong. So I'm just gonna give it a little quick stir here just to make sure everything is nice and melted and blended in and it's beautiful. So all I'm going to do now is just take this hot brine and I'm gonna start very slowly because you should be careful when you're pouring any kind of hot liquid into a glass jar just to make sure it doesn't shatter. The vegetables will absorb some of the heat, but start slow just to be safe. And I'm just going to go straight into the jar with this brine. Once you've got about a ladle to, uh, a ladle or two in the jar, you don't have to worry about going so slowly, other than spilling. But even though we only made about three cups of brine, it should fill both of these jars really well because the vegetables are going to be taking up a lot of that space. So we're just looking to cover these up like so. And I've got a couple of garlic cloves going in. So that's looking really good. And all I wanna do is make sure that I completely cover the vegetables that are inside of that jar. So that's the first one. Next, let's do these cucumbers. There we go. All right, so once again, we're just going to start scooping very carefully this hot brine into this jar. And like I had mentioned earlier, if the garlic cloves go in at this point, that's not a bad thing. So scoop them in, poke them in. They become very nice little pickles in their own right in that jar. And the longer they sit, the more they will continue to infuse some garlic flavor into those pickles. So definitely a good thing to have in there at this point. Like I said, it's just important to give them a boil first just to make sure you kill anything that might be attached to the garlic. All right, so I think maybe one more good scoop. You just wanna make sure that whatever vegetables you're pickling are completely covered by this brine because you don't want anything sticking out or else it's not gonna pickle right. So it's okay at this recipe. You don't have to worry about um, what's called headspace so much because we're not canning. Canning usually has very precise measurements for exactly how much room to leave and you really have to worry about it. Again, that's the beauty of refrigerator pickles. Things are a little more laid back. So you fill it until it's covered, it's good to go. Now all I'm going to do is pop these lids on and I'm just gonna let them come to room temperature before I put them in the refrigerator, just so we don't lower the, or raise the temperature in the refrigerator. So let these sit room temperature and then into the fridge. Really, they're going to be delicious as soon as they're cold. You can give it like a day or two so that they can marinate a little more, but honestly, the second they're cold for me, it's fair game for these pickles. These will keep fresh in your refrigerator for up to a month. You're certainly welcome to give them as gifts, just stress, you wanna keep these cold. Otherwise though, whatever vegetable you like, sky's the limit and that's how you make a refrigerator pickle. And there you have it, a quick and easy refrigerator pickle method that you can use for any vegetable you like. As always, this recipe can be found in the description below. Please like and subscribe for more videos. I'm Jessica. Thanks for watching.